The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And neither does the depth of a node's... Uh, ever hear the expression, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree? Well, that doesn't apply here. But we are going to be dealing with maximum depth of an anary tree. That's the problem we're doing today. Um, so, yeah, let's just check this out. This is a tree problem. So there's a bunch of different tree problems. This is an easier kind of one. We did maximum depth of a binary tree. A binary tree is a tree, if you don't know what a tree is, in which uh, there's nodes, and then there are usually just zero, one, or two children nodes uh, to each node. In an n-ary tree, we have a node, like a tree node, so the root can have as many children as it wants. So you can see in this example we have one, two, three nodes, and uh, in this example we have four children nodes. In the node structure looks different. Instead of a left and right child, we actually often see children as some kind of either list in this case. It's usually like a list uh, most of the time. And uh, yeah, so... Um, what we're going to be doing today is finding the maximum depth of a, uh, an airy tree. And uh, let's just read it really quick. So given an n airy tree, find its maximum depth. Uh, the maximum depth is the number of nodes along the longest path from the root to the leaf. Uh, the leaf is any node that doesn't have any children. So this is a leaf, this is a leaf, this is a leaf, this is a leaf. And we want to find the maximum depth from a root down to any of the leaves. So the longest one we're going to choose. Um, so n area tree input serialization is represented to level order traversing each group of children, blah, blah, blah. Sure. So let's just look at an example. So in this case, the maximum depth is three. Because instead of uh, stopping at these with one, two, one, two, it's one, two, three, right? Uh, in this case, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, right? Because that's the longest one, and there we go. So now that we have uh, an understanding of the problem, how are we going to solve it, right? So we want to find the maximum height from root to the leaf. And we want to get to the one, you know, the longest leaf, the leaf that's at the very bottom, right? That's the farthest down, the maximum depth of the tree. Breadth first search and depth first search, which like are very commonly used in tree problems to solve things because it's a traversal pattern, a searching traversal pattern where breadth first search you're going level by level. And in trees, the depth is actually based on level. So you got like if you're going, um, this is the you know what I mean? Like this is the first level, this is the second, this is the third. Like breadth first search is pretty that's kind of a good connection to make there because breadth first search, even if it's not dealing with trees, is level by level. So it's perfect here because this is actually levels. This is actually height. The levels would go perfectly with the height. So in a breadth first search we'd traverse this level, then this level, and then this level. And uh we'd get the height because we just keep track of it as we go. And uh, we can, I guess we can implement that first, but also depth first search is another way to do it just because it's, uh, we just keep a variable and it goes, you know, it goes as deep as it can go and then it comes back up, but it's going to traverse every single path. Um, so it, that's just another valid way of doing it. Either way works. It's very simple right now in both cases to implement either of them. Um, it's just good to have those in mind when doing tree problems. And oftentimes in the tree problems, we're going to be able to implement either of them. Like breadth for search and depth for search are pretty common in these tree problems to find the answer. You can use whichever one you want. Uh, breadth for search is usually you use a queue and you do the level by level. You put things onto the queue, you pop them off, you keep putting the next level on and evaluating. Depth for search is often recursive. Uh, Either one is fine, but sometimes you just want to go with the one that's easier to implement because sometimes, you know, depth first search might be a three-line recursive solution with a helper method, uh, while breadth first search is way longer. Sometimes the recursion might be harder to write, so it's whatever is easier most of the time. It might be pretty obvious, like it might be a specific thing where it seems obvious what to use. Like in this case, I would use breadth first search just because level by level to get a height. But uh, depth first search is also fine, so it doesn't matter. Um, 
So, I guess let's just do this first. So first thing I would do is I would just say, okay, if root is null, then the depth is going to be zero. So we'll just return zero. Otherwise, we can make a variable called depth, set it to zero. Uh, in breadth for search, we use a queue of nodes to handle our uh, traversal. And what we do is you start off with your initial state in a breadth for search. So you do queue.offer root. Right, so we have the root node on our queue, and then to evaluate the levels, we're looking at the root. We're going to have a while loop. We'll say, okay, while queue is not empty, we're going to evaluate the node and we're going to check if there's no children, we found a leaf. If there are children, we want to put all these on the queue as the next level and then increment the depth. So each iteration of the loop, we're going to increment the depth, and at the end, we'll just return depth, right. Um, the depth, it'll break out when the queue is empty, when there's no more children. So we'll just keep putting children's onto the queue and popping the um, nodes at each iteration to evaluate them, right? So we'll get the size of the queue. We'll say, okay, queue.size, what's the size of the queue? And then we'll loop up to the size of the queue because we have to uh, pop off each of the nodes at that level. So if the queue has one node right now, it's just gonna loop up to one node and it's gonna do uh, get the current node and, uh, or we could just have a, so we're, we're looping up to the size of the queue and what we wanna do is we wanna get that current node. So the, for example, the root would be the first thing. So we'd say current node is equal to queue.pull. So we pull the, whatever the level is off of the queue and then we loop and we could say node child in uh, current node dot children because that's how it's set up right here. And uh, you're just looping through all of the children. So in the root, there's three children. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say, okay, Q dot offer uh, child. So we loop out through all the children, add that level to the queue, and then the depth gets uh, incremented after this loop because that's adding the whole level on. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the breadth first search. We can now implement the depth first search. You could actually simplify it like that. You don't need the braces and uh, you don't need to return depth plus plus. So let's run this, make sure it's all good. There we go, great. And uh, let's just do depth first search now. Okay, so in the DFS, usually for depth first search, you wanna make a helper method because you're gonna be doing recursion. It's easier to just pass it in and do all the recursion in a separate method. We can make it a void. Um, we'll call it get max depth. And what we'll do is we'll take in a node and we'll take in a uh, integer for the depth that we're currently at. What depth first search does, if you don't know, is it just goes instead of going one level at a time, it goes down one path completely, like from root to one leaf, whatever path, and then it uh, backtracks and then goes down another path and another path. So it's kind of going all the way, Is that's why it's deep, depth all the way first, and then comes back and depth all the way, and it just goes down the paths fully. Breath first search is kind of just level by level, right? It's right in the name. Um, we're gonna make a private int max depth. Sometimes you use these um, class variables or properties um, to handle these. So we could just say private int max depth um, and we can just say uh, return max depth after we call the method. We'll initially call the method that we're making, the helper method, and we'll pass in the root and we'll pass in zero. And now we'll just say, okay, if node is equal to null, then we will just return. And then other than that, what we can do is we can, we're gonna do, um, we'll loop through the children nodes and call this recursively. So we'll say for node child in node.children, um, get max depth of child and then depth plus one. So for the children, we add one to the depth each time. And this will traverse all the paths because it's gonna go over all the children. And what it's going to do is, all we have to do now is we just use this variable and we could just say max depth is equal to math.max of um, the current depth. So depth and uh, the current value for max depth. So yeah, that should be it, honestly. 
It's a pretty simple recursive solution, just a few lines. I accidentally did that. You want to start at, um, just like we did in the breadth first search, uh, it counts as one, like, you know what I mean? Like, we have to pass in one, because that the root counts as uh, one depth. Like, when you look at this, like, um, the first node, if it was just one node, it would be one, because this is one, two, three. So this counts as one, so you got to pass in one as the initial depth, and then you, that's it. So that was the problem there. My bad for messing up, but, you know, I keep that in here because you could see what problems I make and then, you know, maybe see how I debug, I guess. But um, thank you guys for watching. It doesn't really matter which one you do. Depth first search, breadth first search. Um, we're just trying to find the height. So let me know what you guys think about this. Let me know if you have any questions. I appreciate you guys for watching, and uh, I'll be, you know, see you in the next time. Thank you, and goodbye.